let's consider a generic linear function of n so let's suppose p of n is a n plus b where a and b are constants we are assuming that a is a positive constant now a n plus b is big o of n square can we prove this well if you recall our previous example a n square plus b n plus c the way we proved that this was big o of n square was that we showed that there exists a constant c such that for large n c times n square is an upper bound on p of n now another way we could have uh, proved it was by going back to a previous example where we showed that a n square plus b n plus c is is big theta of n square now because big theta of n square is really a subset of big o of n square that is any function that is in big theta of n square is also going to be in big o of n square because big theta represents both an upper and uh, the existence of both an upper and a lower bound and big o represents the existence of an upper bound so if something has if, if something is bounded from both above and below by constant multiples of n square then it's also it's 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 trivially true that it's going to be bounded from above by some constant multiple of n square so since we already proved that a n square plus b n plus c is theta of n square we could have directly concluded that in a n square plus b n plus c is big o of n square but we also said in a uh, we also claimed in a previous video that uh, while one can say that e of n equal to big theta of f of n implies that e of n is also big o of f of n we cannot imply the converse that is if p of n is big o of f of n that does not imply that p of n is big theta of f of n so now the example that we have taken up which is this linear function of uh, n this is going to be an example of such a case where a n plus b is big o of n square, but it's not going to be big theta of n square. So how do we prove that there exists an upper bound on this function uh, that this function is bounded from above by some constant multiple of n square? So uh, does there exist? A constant c. Okay, let's call it c two. Greater than zero, such that a n plus b is bounded from above by this c by c two times n square for large n. and the you can see that the answer to this question is quite easy if we just take c2 equal to 1 okay we can we can expect that because this is a quadratic expression of n this is going to going to grow much faster than any linear expression of n right so let's just take c2 equal to 1 so we want to find out if n square is greater than or equal to a n plus b, or if n square minus a n minus b is greater than or equal to sorry n square minus a n minus b is greater than or equal to zero for large n. And the answer is yes because as n becomes very large, these two values are going to be insignificant compared to the value of n square. N square is going to grow very fast, and so again. Uh, based on very similar arguments that we used in uh, examples previously, we can claim that n square minus a n minus b is going to be greater than zero for large n, and so we've proven the existence of an upper bound. So a n plus b is bounded from above by a constant multiple of n square, and so a n plus b is big O of n square.
Now is a n plus b theta of n square? So it, another way to ask this question is, does there exist a constant, say c1, greater than 0, such that a n plus b is bounded from below by c1 times n square. Okay, so we are asking about the existence of a lower bound now instead of an upper bound because to prove that something is the theta of n square we need to show the existence of both an upper and a lower bound. We need to show that this function can be sandwiched between two constant multiples of n square. So there should be one constant multiple of n square acting as the upper bound and there should be another constant multiple of n square acting as the lower bound. We have shown so far the existence of a constant multiple of n square acting as the upper bound. And now we are trying to see if there is another constant multiple of n square that can act as a lower bound for a n plus b. So For this to be true, c1 times n square minus a n minus b needs to be less than or equal to 0. This needs to be less than or equal to 0. Now, is this ever going to happen? Note that c1 needs to be positive. Now, if c1 is positive, the uh, the graph for this expression is going to be a parabola facing upwards. And as n becomes very large, the value of c1 times n square minus a n minus b is going to eventually keep growing. Right. So this is a this is a positive term that is growing very fast compared to these lower order terms. If you take their ratio to c1 n square, that ratio is going to converge towards 0. So it's impossible, therefore, for c1 times n square minus a n minus b to be negative for large n. So it's not possible to find a lower bound for a n plus b that is a constant multiple of n square. So even though a n plus b is below of n square, it is not theta of n square. Now visually, what is a n plus b? a n plus b is going to be a straight line. Now when we are asking whether there exists an upper bound for a n plus b, which was the first part, you know, when we argued that a n plus b is big O of n square, what we really argued was that there does exist a constant multiple of n square such that for large values of n, this constant multiple of n square is going to have its graph lie above a n plus b for n that is large enough. Now is it possible for there to be another constant such that you know another constant c1 such that c1 times n square will forever be below this line a n plus b for large n and the answer is no because once you take any constant greater than 0 you're going to have a parabola. C1 times n square is going to be a parabola and it's going to keep keep on increasing sooner or later above a n plus b. So at some point it's going to cross this linear function because it's growing very fast. So no matter what constant C1 I choose, it's going to be impossible for C1 times n square to remain below this line forever for large values of n. So there is no such constant c1 
such that C1 prime density can act as a lower bound for A and plus B. But there is a constant C2 such that C2 times N square is an upper bound for A and plus B. In fact, you know, I, I, I leave it as an exercise for you to argue that if you take any constant C, C2 greater than 0, okay, it doesn't have to be 1, you can take a constant as small as 1, point, point zero 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 one, or 1 and 1 divided by a million or a billion. Even if you take a constant that is that small, when that constant is multiplied by n square, you're going to get a parabola that is sooner or later going to intersect a n plus b and then rise above a n plus b. So every constant greater than zero that you choose is going to bound a n plus b from above when multiplied by n square. Right? So for any constant c, Uh, C C2 greater than 0, C2 times n square will bound C of n, which is a n plus b, from above for large n. And the other thing we, we just argued is for any constant that we may choose, say C1, C1 times n square can never bound C of n from below. For large then of course, as n tends to infinity. So, that is why uh, a n plus b is big O of n square, but a n plus b is not big theta of n square. Uh, 